I wanted to tell one story about Brady, and I think a lot of you probably know him. The story that I wanted to tell is that um, if you're his friend and you get messages from him once in a while, he, he will send the most beautifully written, you know, texts. And one that I got a couple weeks ago had 18 pictures with it. And Brady had um, had a good day and he got in his wheelchair and went across the street, much to the chagrin of the nurses that he wanted to. But he, it was a nice day and he went across the street and took all these pictures. And every picture has a note about why the, why this thing was beautiful to him and how he's grateful and it makes him, fills him with joy and makes him so grateful. And these are all pictures that he took across the street of birds and leaves and flowers. And um, if you know Brady, you know the meaning of joy and gratitude and how to live a joyful life. He's just a, a remarkable person. So that's all I'm going to say about tonight. Um, I will say, Yesterday, Brady texted me and told me that tomorrow is his birthday. And so we're going to consider this a birthday celebration. And we, um, Sandra Davis, um, one of my co-workers, made some cards today. And there are some markers on the table. If you want to write a card for Brady, I will deliver it to him tomorrow. There are also some cards out on the table, and there's a big thing you can write on. But I think he would really appreciate some notes from everybody. And so that's, that's all I have to say. I'm just really grateful that you're here. And, and I think we can consider this a celebration and a, and a gathering to just show Brady how much we love him. And that's what this is. And so we're going to celebrate with our music. And uh, so thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, man, look at my life. I'm not like you are. 24 hours, so much more. Live alone in a paradise that makes you think of you. Love lost such a cost. Any things you don't get lost. Like a coin that won't get tossed. Rolling home to you. Oh, man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot like you. I need someone to love. Doesn't mean that much to me, to me, not much to you. I've been first and last. Look at how the time goes past. But I'm all alone at last, rolling home to you. love to sing harmonies and when you have a family like ours who gets together around the holidays and sings a lot around the holidays you start seeing Christmas carols November 1st um, and it's kind of a shame okay okay good I wasn't sure if we were going to get in trouble um, but we have some Christmas carols for you
beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. Take a look at the fire that turns, glistening once again. With candy canes and silver lanes of gold, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store, but the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. A pair of holly and a pitch of a chair for us to play in bed. Don't look at Tom, we'll go for a walk at the house of Jack and Jack. And Mom and Dad will hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store. But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that you'll see when you're all front door. Sure, it's Christmas once more. Of a white Christmas, just like the ones I used to know, where the trees glisten, children listen. Anyway, but we weren't 
we would hide in our bedroom and sing together and uh, share the room like eight to We had one of those, um, you know, little tape recorders, you know. And when Kathy was recorded that, remember that? We recorded, uh, would you like to ride in my beautiful balloon? If you remember that song, it goes, it changes key and it goes up, and then it goes up, and then it goes up. So by the end of it, we're going, the barbershop quartet they had a practice one day and they got out that tape recorder and that tape was in there and they played it and they were laughing so hard they just had tears running down their face and then they came and got us and they said did you record this and we what to say no no I don't know who that was we're gonna sing a couple of uh, songs by a wonderful songwriter that we love, Paul Simon. And um, what I like about what we get to do is, I, I don't know how you would define the genre of music we like. It's just, it's good. It's just good lyric, good melody, good harmony, and there's nothing like that here of the 60s and 70s for this. So we're going to sing a couple of Paul Simon songs. Second of the songs, I guess, right? America and the Boxer. So... Feel free to sing along if you know any parts of those. I bet you do. I know you do.
would know my story seven told. I have squandered my existence on the pockets full of wonder, such a promises. All lies and just till a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. When I left my home and family, I was no more than a boy in the company of strangers in the quiet of the railway station landscape. Laying low, seeking out the foreign quarters where the ratty people go, looking for the places only they would walk. close with a um, song that we always close our shows with, Watch Over Us. It's a little temper song. It's kind of like, and it reminds me of, um, you know, we all have hard times in life, don't we? We all have a story. Every single one of us has a story. And uh, our job is really to show up for each other and love and encourage each other. And when I see a room like this, I think, you know, I think the world's going to be okay.
stage again. <laughs> We're pals and pals stick together with Scotch brand cellophane tape. <laughs> you know, Stephen used to write jingles, so uh, there's another example. I just wanted to mention something about Brady. Because uh, Brady is a great example of why the songwriters existed. You, uh, you volunteer, you create this organization, you put things together, and you think you're doing it for other people. And all of a sudden, a guy like Brady comes along, and he's doing it for you. And he was so inspiring that he really made, as Linda said, he really taught you how to make life worthwhile. And so I'm pleased to see everybody here who shares that belief because we all really admire Brady and so I'm glad to hear he's back in town yeah this fellow Steve Eaton was the guy who got it all started the songwriters the songwriters association I like to tell the story this way he was sitting around home and talking to his uh, beautiful wife, Judy, and he said, you know, I'd just like to get some guys together and we'll pass the guitar around. Everybody will do their original material. It'll be just great. And Judy said, that won't be at our house, will it? <laughs> <laughs> and Steve, who's a pretty smart guy, said, oh, no, I wasn't even thinking of that. <laughs> So we put together a little show out at the Blue Moose Cafe in uh, Eagle, and it was pretty darn good. Had a lot of people show up, and everybody wanted to do it again, and it's still going on now, probably about, uh, what, 10 or 12 years later. So it was an idea that really had merit, and so uh, I, I know there are hundreds and maybe even a thousand songwriters in Idaho who are 
grateful to Steve for all that he's done. So thank you so much. <laughs> and then Rob Harding comes along, comes back to town, starts making a name for himself once again in Idaho. And uh, Rob's been a very good friend for many years, always pleased to hear him play. He has a unique playing style, which you're going to enjoy tonight. So, uh, is there anything further to add? Okay, thanks. Well, I've done enough. <laughs> done enough damage. Anyway, thanks very much. Great to see you all here, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Eaton and Rob Hardy. Well, I suppose you want us to play now, right? So, I have my band over here, Sonus Music Stand. It's an iPod. Is it an iPad or iPod? Yes. Um, oh, well, I first would like to say, um, how about the Sturdy Souls, man? I mean, I played it from one, like one time before, and they were so good, I just didn't want to come up. I, I didn't. And I've known Linda for a long time, and I know, you know, and her sister Kathy, and I know Stephanie, and everybody else, and, and uh, they, you know, they've been around, I mean, before this hotel was here, I mean, they were playing music, in fact, I think they played in here one time, when it was the, was it still the Riverside then, too, I don't know, this used to be a disco in here, and I think they came here and played one time, and they treated them like shit, and so they said, well, one day we're going to come back and buy that place and turn it into a laundromat, you know, <laughs> it's a pretty nice laundromat, wouldn't you think? <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to go back to my iPod band. It's, uh, I've been playing this for a long time because the money just ain't as good as it used to be. So I had to just kind of figure out how to play by myself and not be in a band because I, if I was in a band, I had to pay everybody, you know. And uh, I'm making less money now than I was when I'm back in the 60s, you know. How are you doing? <laughs> are we okay? Oh, good. <laughs> Anyway, so I got my iPad band here, and Rob's been playing with me, and it's the only, having this iPad's the only way I can afford him, you know. <laughs> so we're going to start off with this song that um, I've been playing forever, and you've all heard it before, probably. And um, it's called Asleep at the Wheel, so let's give it up for the iPod band.
sound different than the last time you heard me. I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> so here I am, just you know, the same formula I've used forever, just, you know, just be an idiot and everybody will like it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, this next song I'm going to do for you is one that I wrote when I lived up in the mountains above Pope Catello. And uh, was, I had my studio up in the very top. It was a four, it was a four story house, and it was, I tell everybody it's the house the carpenters built because I built it from the money that I made from the song that I wrote for the carpenters. And that's it, it rained that day, and I remember um, I used to open the window, and after it rained, you know how it smells when you live up in the mountains and it rains. You can smell the sagebrush, you know. It was just really cool. And all of a sudden, man, I just like, I, I was on, I think everybody's brain's on some kind of a radio channel or something, you know, because I, I just got this one channel that just keeps feeding me stuff all the time. That's where I get all my songs from. And I wrote this song, and it's pretty complicated. I look at it, and I go, I couldn't, I didn't write that, you know, and I really think I didn't, but I was just lucky enough to be there and write it down what was coming at me. And it came at me so fast that I couldn't even write it down fast enough. I was just like, Slow down. <laughs> Whoever's doing that, slow down with it. You know? So, um, so anyway, I wrote this song. It's, it's called "Lucky Me," and it's just about some guy that's a vagrant, and he he screwed up and and uh, decided he didn't want to be with his wife and his family anymore. And he just left, and the next thing you know, you see him laying on a park bench with a paper on his face, and he doesn't know what he's at or what he's doing. That's kind of what it's about. <laughs> so, it's called "Lucky Me." Just a 
poor boy in the prime of my life I've been through more than most I've been down every highway I've been from coast to coast I was suffering from a loneliness A vagabond only knows Looking like some other doctor again Wearing his worn-out clothes Hoping this life is just a mean But afraid that it's an end I need a friend something it was his passion he just really thought that you know the isa was a place for him to go write songs and he was so happy to come there and so when he'd get up there we'd set him up on the stage up here and he you know he's in a wheelchair and he's got arms and stuff so when he played the, his guitar he had a full this isn't even a full-size guitar but when he had played he'd have to put it up here under his neck because the the arms of the wheelchair would let him you know hold it down here where you're supposed to be you know and so Rich and I and, and Terry Miller and some of the other people in the United States, you know what, man? Let's get him a baby guitar, you know, like a baby Martin or a baby, uh, some kind of baby guitar. <laughs> and we did. We just, you know, we just took some money out of our thumbs and, went, and Terry went out and shop around and find this guitar for him. And then the next time we came back, Reddy was there and we gave it to him. God, it was so cool, man. <laughs> I don't know how many songwriters there are that actually belong to this group because you you don't need a card or a badge or whatever. You just come to one of these things and participate and you're one of us. So on behalf of all of you and all of them, I would like to say Brady Hammond is has been and then yeah. Turn it loose. Turn it loose. <laughs> Brady Hammond has been an inspiration to all of us. 
This is for you, Brady, for the songwriter. It's not a margin, but it's close. things go right we're gonna he'll he'll be back and he'll be playing Amanda Jean for us you know pretty soon you know, you know. so um, so I would like to do a song that's um, it's, it's kind of a sad song but it's, it's not about Brady so much it's just about what's going on in the world today um, I've been kind of emotional the last few days since all this stuff is happening go back in the Middle East and, so I wrote this song um, and it's kind of about this. It's a. Uh, it's called the bridge. So, Rob and I have never played it before. We did it at our sound check, but let's see if we can do this and pull it off. <laughs>
It's a real time bomb, it's gonna make everything alright. I know that it ain't been easy, and it sure hasn't been much fun. Been on the run, just in front of the gun, ahead of the sheriff on my life. Mama, don't you worry, I wrote myself a million dollar bill. a million dollar blues the ba -ba 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 -da -da. there's a man who lives in Nashville he told me that he loved my song call up the man and at the grocery store I'm gonna pay off my bill before long It's gonna end all blues Gonna chase all your blues away Mama, don't you worry I wrote myself a million dollar blues Mama, don't you worry I wrote myself a million dollar blues Mama, don't you worry I wrote myself a million dollar blues song we're going to do for you is one that everybody knows. Everybody knows this song. And um, we're going to ask you to sing along with us on this because it's happy birthday for Brady. So Ron, 
Are you gonna get this? Yes, sir. He's got it. We got. We have Ron Gardner who who uh, offered to come and film this whole thing tonight. And we're gonna let Brady great, great see it. So thank you, Ron, for that. And also Rob Baker who's doing the sound back there. Thank you, man. He's, he's the dude. He's the dude. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brady. Get plastered, you bad guy. Happy birthday. It's gonna get crazy and weird. <laughs> I always say that we're not gonna do this song, and then I go, Yeah, what the hell? We're gonna do it anyway, man. I mean, what have we got to lose? <laughs> not a whole lot. <laughs> I got kicked out of my bluegrass band when I became a Democrat. Just because I like the Dixie Chicks got out of Vietnam Just because I love Martin Luther King And hate the Ku Klux Klan I hope the South won't rise again There ain't nothing wrong with that I got kicked out of my bluegrass band When I became a Democrat I got kicked out because I voted for Obama Kicked out because my daddy is my mama Kicked out I believe in global warming I listen to NPR every morning A skinny chick on the fiddle Has a George Bush tattoo Me too, it's right And right between her cleavies it says This one's for you And the fat dude on the banjo Wears a NASCAR baseball hat I got kicked out of my bluegrass band when I became a Democrat. I got kicked out because I voted for Obama. Kicked out because my daddy is my mama. Kicked out, I believe in global warming. I listen to NPR every morning. Because I voted for Obama Kicked out Because my daddy is my mama Kicked out I believe in global warming I listen to NPR every morning The TV on the tour bus Was always on Fox News With a picture of Sarah Palin In her underpants and shoes And just because I called my bluegrass band a bunch of dumbass trailer rats. I got kicked out of my bluegrass band when I became a Democrat. I got kicked out because I voted for my mama. Kicked out because my daddy is my mama. Kicked out. I don't believe in global warming. I listen to NPR every morning.
went to the went on this uh, this little film cruise with this friend of mine that lives in Pocatello, and um, he had the he had the, uh, the the movie rights to shoot this motorcycle rally that had happened in Sturgis for like all of the people that ride Harley Davidson go back there, and it's a town of about maybe two thousand people. It ends up being fifty thousand when Sturgis is going on. And he hired me to write, a, write the music for this, uh, for this event. And uh, so he went and shot it. And, uh, and he told me, he said, this guy named Bill Davison, who was like the guy who started Harley Davidson, was going to be there. And he says, you ought to take this jingle that he knew that I wrote for Harley Davidson to play for him and see if they'd buy it. And, and so uh, I, went, or, uh, I, I went there and saw him. And I said, uh, you know, I want to play this jingle. And he said, I don't even bother to play for me because we don't even advertise anymore. I said, why? He said, he said we're back order, man. We don't need to advertise. I mean, everybody wants a Hardy Davidson on. He says, but maybe if we get, you know, desperate and we're not selling any cycles again, then we'll call you up. You know? and that was about 20 years ago. Or so. <laughs> anyway, so I wrote, here's a song I wrote for him. Oh, Spirit of the Highway. Stepping on a kickstart, there's a rumble in my heart. Longing for the freedom and the call of the old mountain road. It's more than just a lifestyle, been inside me for a long while. And it lives in the heart of American girls and boys. It's the spirit of the high. Fly there on the seat of a big 
I know you don't know this, but I'm famous. <laughs> Um, so, I was I was working in, in California when I, I was in the record business back a long time ago. And um, I was playing with um, this group that they, the record company hired. It was, a, it was the wrecking crew. Most of them in this group were the, was the wrecking crew. It was at least Clark was playing bass and Larry Nectar was playing piano. Larry used to play with... Simon and Garfunkel, and he, he actually won a Grammy for playing the, the piano solo on Bridge Over Show of Water. <clears throat> so um, I wrote this song called Ragdoll, which I'm about to play for you. And I'm in the studio with the wrecking crew, <laughs> and um, we, got done, we got done, and everybody was leaving except Larry was still there. We were, I was talking to him. And he says, Hey, Steve, uh, he says, I'm going to fly back to New York tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to be doing this record with Art Garfunkel. And I said, wow, that's cool, Larry. So he said, yeah, uh, could you make me like a seven and a half of this song that we just recorded? It was Ragdoll. And he says, I'm going to take it back and play it for Art and see if he, you know, if he might record it. I said, you, would you care if I do that? And I go, shit, no. <laughs> and, uh, and so <clears throat> anyway, he did it. And I, never, I forgot about it. You know, a month or so went by, and, and uh, then next thing I knew, I had a producer call me and say, hey, "Steve, you heard? You, you know what happened?" I said, "No. What are you talking about?" He goes, "Our girlfriend could record your tune." I go, so what? I forgot all about it. He says, "Ragdoll. He did that." And then I started thinking back and said, "Wow." And so I had to call up Larry and say, "Hey, Larry, thank you very much." And he said, "You're welcome." <laughs> so anyway, that's that's this song here. <clears throat> That's the story behind it. I think Glenn Campbell, Glenn Campbell recorded it yeah, later. He did, he right? did it too, man. Jimmy Webb was here one night, and Jimmy Webb helped helped uh, pitch that song with Larry. So anyway, I know all the big people, man. La, 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 
I think uh, I'm going to do one more song for you, um, unless you give me like five encores or something. Like that. <laughs> but I always like to end the, end, end my show with just something upbeat. It's fun. Out of breath. Yeah. What? Yeah, until you run out of breath, you will. Yeah. <laughs> well, that could be pretty soon. <laughs> what are you doing in the woods? Come on, everybody! <laughs> it's Louie Louie time. What you say? What are you doing in the woods?
Thank you very much, everybody. to remain anonymous said that if Steve would play one more song, they would donate a hundred dollars. Just give it put in the pocket. I don't know who did that. That was nice of you. Thank you so much. Only problem is I don't have any more songs. I'm sorry. All right. Mr. Hey, Mr. Dreamer. Yeah. 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 Mind of my own. I pack 
my bags and I bid my folks goodbye. I got together with some friends from my hometown. We started a band and we did some traveling around. We were playing music folks love to hear. For a song and dance and a friendly glass of beer. Don't you think it's time that you're settling down? I said, maybe I will next time around. It all depends if my record's number one. But until then, I guess I've just begun. so he'll be able to see it. Yeah. God bless you, Brady. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much.